okay. He finished his primary and secondary education at Chiang Kai-shek College, maintaining consistent first honors and graduating valedictorian. 2009, finished at the Philippine General Hospital straight program in plastic and reconstructive surgery. 2012, graduated Master of Hospital Administration, MHA, at the University of the Philippines College of Public Health, most outstanding MHA graduate and highest in comprehensive exam. 2016, graduated Master of, Sci of Science in Clinical Medicine, major in <clears throat> surgery at the University of the Philippines College of Medicine, only the seventh to successfully complete the course since it was offered. 2018, graduated Master of Arts in Education, major in Education Management or MAED at the University of Caloocan City, Maine. Currently, he is taking his PhD in Education, major in Education Management at the University of Caloocan City. For his professional affiliation, 2013 Fellow, Philippine Association of Plastic, Reconstructive, and Aesthetic Surgery, PAPRAS. Currently, he is a board member. 2014 Philipp Fellow, Philippine College of Surgeon, or PCS. 2014 Fellow, Philippine Academy of Head and Neck Surgery Incorporation, PANSI and currently the president. 2016, he is a fellow slash life member, Philippine Society for Quality in Healthcare or PSQA. 2020, fellow slash diplomate exam given by the Philippine Society of Anatomies. For his award, 2013 awarded the Samuel Green Award for Outstanding Junior Faculty. After five years, which is 2018, he was awarded some, the Samuel Green Award for Outstanding Junior Faculty for the second time. For his position, 2012, became the Division Chief of the United Doctors Medical Center, Department of Surgery, Plastic Surgery Division. 2016, became the Medical Director of the Quali Med Hospital, Health Network, Mall Base Clinic, Ambulatory Surgical Center, and the Qualimed Hospital, SJDM. 2017, Training Officer in Plastic Surgery under Consortium 2, FEU, SLMC, JRMMC, and QMMC. 2019, Medical Director slash Part Owner of St. Peregrine Surgery and Cancer Center, a private medical facility which provides affordable and even no balance bill, NBB surgery. Other activities, he is a volunteer worker with the Philippine Band of Mercy, an NGO partner of Smile Train, where they provide free cleft lift and pallet surgery over the country. To date, he has personally done over 2,000 free cleft operations. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Dr. Mel Anthony Cruz. So good afternoon. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I took the liberty of actually making a self or pre-recorded uh, presentation for the purpose of uh, time constraints and actually just in case that there are some problems with connectivity. So I'll be turning off my personal camera uh, to conserve bandwidth. And I hope everyone would... Uh, appreciate my voice in this pre-recorded lecture. Good afternoon. My talk for this afternoon is on being a physician and on becoming a plastic surgeon. I am Dr. Mel Anthony Cruz. What is a doctor? So a typical person would actually say that a doctor is the clinician, so a person who actually sees and treats patient. But there's more to that to being a doctor. So we have this concept of five-star physicians wherein the doctor is not only a physician or a clinician, okay? You actually have 
a doctor who is the researcher. So most of the vaccines and the treatments that you are seeing now are by doctors who actually do research. Next are doctors that do managerial work or are doctor managers. So the medical directors of different hospitals, the deans of different schools, especially those of medicine, are actually some physicians. So there are doctor managers. Okay. You have also doctor who are doctors who are social mobilizers. So these are the doctors who actually are part of different organizations doing social work. You have Hospital on Wheels, you have Philippine Band of Mercy, you actually have your Smile Train, okay, and other organizations which actually act social change or do social changes. Next would be a doctor is also an educator. So most of the doctors that you may meet are somehow related to a certain faculty, so they are actually a doctor, teacher, professors. So they teach in different med schools, and even residencies and other training programs. So how is it that you be, how is it to become a doctor in the Philippines? There are 10 steps. The first one is to prepare as early as high school. So although STEM classes may help you, they're not absolutely necessary. Then you have to get into college. So it may be helpful to actually have a college related to medicine like nursing, med tech, PT, but these are not absolutely necessary. Then you take a gap year. It is optional. You don't necessarily have to rest, but it would be useful for you to be able to think on what med school you want to apply to. So then you choose your target med school, maybe a government or a private med school. But in order to be able to apply, you have to ace or top the NMAT exam. Okay, so the NMAT exam or the National Medical Admission Test is like an IQ test showing that you are ready to enroll into a med school and you would be able to somehow adapt to the life of a med student. Okay? So then you apply to your chosen med schools. There are advantages and disadvantages to private and government med schools. Private med schools are relatively easier to get into, but their tuition fee is quite expensive. Now, government med schools, there is a limit to the number of uh, people who can apply, but some of them are free and some are uh, having relatively affordable tuition fees. And another advantage of government med schools is that it's easier to get into your decide training programs in the future if you decide to take on residency. Then you can survive med school. It's easier said than done. Surviving med school means that you have to pass all of your examinations or most of your examinations for the next five years. Then you have to pass the physician licensure exam. So the physician licensure exam is a nationwide exam similar to your bar exam for lawyers. And for you to be able to practice in the Philippines, you have to pass this exam. Then you undergo medical residency training in your desired institution. So this is either three to five years, depending on the specialty that you want to have. Okay. Then you get into fellowship training, which is to further specialize into the particular residency that you took. So to give an example, to become a plastic surgeon in the country, you have to have a pre-med of two to four years. Two to four years, why is that? Because some institutions like UP and La Salle, they have straight programs which actually gives you two years of college preparatory before you can get into med school and not the usual four years. Then you have the typical four years of med school, one year of internship. Then if you want to become a plastic surgeon, your residency should be in general surgery for three to five years. Again, why three to five years? There are institutions like the Philippine General Hospital and UST, which allow their residents to train in plastic surgery fellowship after only three years of general surgery. So they take their general surgery and plastic surgery training for six years instead of the usual eight years. Then you have your board certification for two years where you will have your written and oral exams before you become a board certified plastic surgeon. And it takes around one year for you to become a fellow, the F before your uh, surname. Uh, the F, which is a suffix of your surname, okay, 
uh, this takes approximately one year for you to become a fellow of the Society of Plastic Surgeons. So a total of 16 to 20 years for you to become a board-certified plastic surgeon in the country. Now, what is plastic surgery? So plastic surgery is a branch of surgery concerned with the repair of deformities, the correction of functional deficits, and the improvement of form and appearance of the human body. In Tagalog, aayusin ang mga may sira, itatama ang may pagkukulang, at iaayos ang hindi masyadong maganda. Okay? Now, what does plastikos mean? So, plastikos, it's a Greek word meaning fit for molding. So, in plastic surgery, uh, our practice is broadly divided into the reconstructive and the aesthetic aspects. Get me out of here! So, what is reconstructive surgery? So, these are the things that correct or repair abnormal features and structures. So, ito yung mga bagay na inaayos mo ang mga bagay na abnormal o may sira. So, the aim is to return or approximate to normal function. While cosmetic surgery, on the other hand, improves on features that are normal. Pinapaganda mo ang mga bagay na ayos naman, nagkataon lang na pangit, mataba, or hindi kaakit-akit ang itsura. So, the point is, for you to be able to improve self-image and appearance. Now, what is the scope of plastic surgery? So, as Verdan in 1974, he's a Swiss plastic surgeon, would say it, plastic surgeons extend his surgical activities not only to the skin and adnexa, but in diverse parts of the face, hands, neck, and abdominal wall, the extremities, and urogenital apparatus, the breast, and scalp. So, reconstructive procedures include vascular and microvascular surgery, peripheral nerve injury, and transplantation. So, here lies the problem. There is a blurred line between what we do or what we can do versus the things that other specialties do. So the items on the left, like your congenital anomalies like cleft, hypospadias, and meningocils, maxillofacial, craniofacial surgeries, wound care, aesthetic and cosmetic surgery, burn management, lasers, and dermabrasions, these are within the field of plastic surgery. However, on the right, you would notice that there are other specialties who do or claim to do these specialties or these procedures as well. Okay, so there is an overlap with other specialties. Now, one of the questions we commonly encounter is: It is is it against the Catholic teaching or the Christian teaching to have aesthetic surgery? Now, Pope Pius the Twelfth would actually say, if we consider physical beauty in its Christian light. And if we respect the conditions set by our moral teachings, then aesthetic surgery is not in contraindication to the will of God, in that it restores the perfection of the greatest work of creation, who is man. Finally, is being a doctor worth it? Now, the benefits of being a doctor include working in medicine can be immensely satisfying. Being able to help someone on a daily basis, being able to change their life in a small way is very satisfying. And you get to do this if you are a doctor on a daily basis. Then you also have your immense job security. Okay? As my dad would always say, Anak, pwede kang hindi umaman sa pagiging doktor, pero wala naman ako nakikitang doktor na naguguto. Okay? So jokingly, he would answer or tell me that. Now, what do you mean by immense job security? Uh, you have different occupations and businesses. They would come and go, but the demand for health and life would not go away. So, in essence, being a doctor has its job security. 
in that people would always pay or a certain degree try to pay to have life and health. Number three, you'll enjoy a good salary. Some doctors would actually make it that they become really rich. But if you don't get rich and you want to get employed, somehow you'll actually enjoy a good salary. Typically, a resident in training, so these are the people who haven't finished training residency yet, in a government hospital would actually earn around 50000 or more a month, which is good enough for a small family. Okay? What more if you actually earn a lot in your private practice? Okay? Next, you positively affect patients every day. Some patients would actually claim that they feel better whenever they see a doctor. I'm specifying some, not all patients. And in essence, you know that as a doctor, you're able to improve your patient's life or status on a daily basis, even in small steps. Now, some drawbacks of being a doctor. Med school debt can be substantial. In the Philippines, some private med schools would actually have 150 to 200,000 as their semestral tuition fee. Okay? And in the States, if you're going to study medicine in the States, sometimes it takes around 10 to 15 years before you can pay your student loans. Okay? Next is you have to make sacrifices. This is not just during med school, during training. This is actually even if you're already a consultant and doing your own practice. Okay? What are the sacrifices? Sometimes you are duty during special occasions or family gatherings and you cannot leave the hospital. Sometimes you would get referred emergencies at night and during special events that you are attending. So you won't be able to attend those events because you have an emergency that you have to go to. Okay? Next, rules and regulations can be frustrating. Of course, there are rules and regulations to everything, but sometimes the rules and regulations to doctors can be a little stricter than those rules that other people encounter. For example, a doctor to be accredited by PhilHealth. What does that mean? A patient, seeing that doctor can use his or her PhilHealth, a doctor should be able to pay currently 90,000 pesos in advance so that the patients can use their field healths. See? Next, another example is a typical doctor okay, who earns a certain amount in a year has to pay approximately 35% of their total income in taxes. Okay? So, well, everyone should be able to pay their taxes, but sometimes there are additional taxes imposed on certain procedures done by doctors, especially aesthetic procedures. Okay. Then, finally, Dr. Google and other quacks. It is simply frustrating to argue with someone who claims to know a lot by doing a 5 to 10 minute Google search okay, and comparing what he researched from Google to your 15 to 20 years of training because you have a social and moral responsibility as a doctor to correct their misconceptions. But unfortunately, a lot of people believe themselves to be experts because of a 5 to 10 minute Google search. To end my presentation, this is a quote from Hippocrates, the father of medicine. The aim of medicine is to cure sometimes, to treat often, and to comfort always. You don't have to cure every single disease process that you find, but make sure that when your patient goes, there is comfort in the way they go. So whenever you are trying to look at the patient, do not treat the disease process, treat the patient as a whole. Okay. So someday I hope you become doctors, it's still your choice, and thank you for listening. So that ends my relatively short slash long presentation. Uh, thank you for having me.
Thank you very much, Dr. Mel, for providing with such an interesting, stimulating, and wonderful talk in the fields of medicine.